Right, we will, of course, start the weekend properly with our Indie of the Week. And this Ooh. week, we're going all Modern warfare with tabletop ah. skirmish games. Now, I did hint at this a couple of weeks ago um, when we were looking at the modern miniatures, uh, that this was the reason behind that. Uh, I right. just had to wait on Amazon actually delivering my, my rules. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I could see it, which they still haven't done because they are just the absolute worst. Um, but Tabletop Skirmish Games is a, uh, a fascinating collection of war games. Um, now, there's actually a few different ones. Uh, the one right. we're mostly going to be focusing on is Rogue Warriors okay. and some of its uh, expansions and the like. Um, but uh, we'll probably have a look at some of the other things that are on the website as well, just to to give it a proper showcase. Um, interesting thing about these games is they are low model count, like super low. Mm-hmm. You build a team of four. So you have your groups of specialists, whether they're Navy SEALs, Army Ranger, SAS, whatever it happens to be. Um, You've got different sort of uh, expertise groups, concepts, if you will. So counterinsurgency, counterterrorism, hostage um, taking or liberating, depending on what side of the the field you happen to be playing on. Um, (laughs) And within that, uh, you have various specialists that you can recruit in. Uh, so you can build and tailor your team to the scenario or mission that you're playing, uh, mm. which is really interesting because... We have the whole with... PDF here, Jerry. Yeah, do you yeah. want me showing this off? Yes, yes, feel free. The, um, the, the small four-man team means ideally what you want to do is take a, a expertise, <laughs> a, a mission team appropriate to the mission you're playing and then take the specialists yeah. that you think will help you complete that now in a lot of games people spam you know snipers are best therefore i will take three snipers <laughs> there's nothing saying you can't do that but you may find that you're not best placed to complete whatever mission you happen to be yeah, doing never get to the hostages and get out yeah. if you do that so mm. the, and the way the book is broken down um as you see in there the the mission uh, sort of aspects there's a loss of narrative that Lee crafts into his games, into all of them. Um, that there's like four pages of areas, theaters that you may be actually operating in from, you know, mountainous regions to wherever. And, and underneath there's like two points going, well, th- these are concepts for mission games that you can play. So um, there's a, a good constructive direction within the game itself yeah. uh, because it's so heavily narrative based you would think that uh, it would be sort of prescriptive but there's some great pieces in here uh, and the system itself is shockingly simple to put together yes. so you know <laughs> d6 game ones are always foo bars sixes are always successes your target number is always a four plus mm-hmm. hey modif- i like that you modify the dice roll so if you roll a three when you're shooting, Lloyd, and you're in yeah. half range, you'd get a plus one. So that's you on your four. That's a success. Um, if you'd aimed, that would be up to five. So, you know, successy. Uh, but if they're behind heavy cover, pulls you back down to a three, miss. Mm-hmm. So you only have yeah. to modify. And there's only those, like, there's only like five modifiers, like heavy and light cover, aiming, yeah. um, half range. And I think there's one other. But I like I liked that really, they really made simple. cover really really simple as well. Yeah, it was very much like, can you see a little bit of the model? Easy. Is yeah. it completely covered by like a head or something? Well, you know, yeah, it was yeah really much harder to kind of make it so it was very easier to uh, sort of like line up exactly what you're doing at a particular mm. moment. So, mm. yeah. What am I looking at here? Scenario layouts, right. deployments, deployment yeah. zones. Yeah. There are a full uh, alphabet's worth of deployment zones from Alpha through to Zulu plus a dose of additional ones, uh, which are the alpha tables later on. So you can see there a huge amount of options within your deployments. Um, It also plays on a three by three ordinarily. Um, We'll look at something with tiger blood that's a bit different later on. Uh, But I I like just the the cleanness of the concept and the design, um, including things like 
mission design as well. So uh, it gives you an idea of there's some missions in there that you can go in and start playing. But designing your own missions after the fact is very, very simple indeed, um, which is great because when you're playing a narrative game or even a series of games, you want to be in a position where you can easily adapt and having a rule set that's very light and flexible uh, means that you can sort of lean into the actual scenario missions that you're playing. Um, it is alternative activation with a little twist, which is really cute, which is every time you go to activate a model, you roll a d6, and on a one, your opponent gets to choose what model is being activated instead. So oh, when you've got that sniper shot idea. beautifully lined up yeah, and you're thinking, yeah. I'm going to turn his head into a canoe, and then you roll that one, uh, and then you end up having to you know, use somebody who's behind the back of a building a mile away, and all they're going to do is run for a turn, now they're completely out of position. Um, it throws really a, a, a nice bit of like Hollywood twist to it. Yeah, yeah, a nice bit of fog and friction as well. You can never be one hundred percent certain that you are going to definitely get um, the model you want to activate when you want to activate it. Uh, which means yeah. you really have to plan not just what you want to do with specific models, but what all of your team are doing. Where are they going? How do you complete the mission? Uh, mm -hmm. If if you're forced to suddenly activate Ooh. somebody that you weren't expecting, can they still be effective? for your end goal uh so yeah, or if you're desperately trying to get someone into cover and you can't activate them now you know they're going to stay out there in the middle of nowhere while i get at least another shot at them yeah yeah mm -hmm. i've just hopped over onto their facebook here hmm. so they're going a little bit of a facebook following here i yeah. see lots of people posting about their finding what models what, to what they're up to like here's yeah. someone doing gi joe that mm -hmm. that would be adam <laughs> yes <laughs> Adam is a bit of a legend. In fact, I've actually got some of Adam's stuff to talk about whenever we hit uh, Tiger Blood um, as well. But because Wait, you're playing you see this one a, down here, carry on, Jay. I'm going to uh, find because one. you're playing in such a, a tight space in the majority of times, um, it allows you to really go to town with your setup as well. Ooh, Scarbox button that stuff. Well, you want to see a setup? Where do you see this one? Look at this. Oh, cargo ship. Oh, going all day, Captain America. Yeah. Well, uh, and this is a prime example. So there, there's a a mission in Tiger Blood uh, that is set on a, a six by three table on a cargo ship. Obviously, massive. Not everybody is going to want to or have the time to put together a massive six foot long cargo ship. If you can open the links I sent you of the images, you'll see yeah. what Adam has done, which is absolute genius, especially for games like this where you you might just be playing on a cargo ship once. Or, or doing a hostage rescue on an airplane in an airport once and I'm building a massive plane, expensive, time consuming. However, by the medium of wood, matchsticks, lollipop sticks, and wooden blocks, you can do you this. You too can have a big cargo ship. I yeah. absolutely love this. Because it just looks um, like a, ta a tactical map. At it looks point, like, yeah. Which I think is really cool. Yeah. 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 Um, just so, spray it all green. It's like yeah. one of those training layouts of a fake town. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like you know, which, whatever they call it. Which makes perfect sense because, you know, if they are going to be doing a specific mission, your team's probably going to be in one of those towns training uh, for weeks on an end. Uh, so for people worried about building a narrative campaign and having to have every bit of kit that you need for a table, you know, oh, this week we're going to be in maximum security jail and next week the campaign's going to move us to blah and blah and blah i go well that Just gets <laughs> gets very expensive very quickly kids yeah. building these sandbags yeah better Lego. Yeah, those are, those are bits of wall or um dockside rubbly and and stuff like that difficult training so, so that's that's yeah. your Whoa. that's your peer the I thing like is really the thing i like, really cool like his mat yeah that's his cool. carpet's really cool <laughs> the thing that's really good about this as well is that <laughs> It plays really nicely into as you're saying, like because it could be so varied. Like there's like yeah. a D, was it a D sixty six chart of mm -hmm. locations and missions and objectives and everything else. So if you use that and then just be like, right, I now just know how many lollipop sticks I need to use. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean this away you the, go. So. There's an airliner. Get on, yeah. get the hostages out yeah. and kill kill the insurgents before they blew the the, the plane up. Yeah. 
I see uh, someone has robbed the, the local coffee shop of all the stirrers. <laughs> uh, all he's missing here is a woman getting up in the middle of the flight saying, you're all going to die and screaming and shouting about getting off the plane. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's, it's ideal, really. It's what we, it's what we love. Uh, so the, the core system then is the, the Warriors book, but Lee's been doing a lot of stuff in the background. Uh, and has a lot planned as well because it's a it's a modern system, but modern theoretically is anything from sort of World War Two onwards. Um, mm-hmm. The Tiger Blood book is a homage to everybody's favourite lunatic, Charlie, uh, and <laughs> Mr. Sheen's um, seminal 1990 <laughs> film Navy Seals, which if people haven't seen it, by the way, they really should. I, it, I watched it is the trailer for it immediately after you read Did you? you well, uh, you've never seen Navy Seals. Never, oh, my God. It, but my God, it looks fun. So. Oh, it, it's it's 100% <laughs> the sort of fun 80s slash 90s action romp um, mm-hmm. that you, you, that you don't really like, see these days. Yeah. My own particular favorite <laughs> is near the end when Michael Biehn is, uh, is about to get killed by somebody and he's on his throat mic. The sniper in the team is nicknamed God. It's like, God, can you hear me? And the guy's going, your God cannot help you now. And then, Bam. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, but this is a, uh, a 1980s campaign uh, sort of structure where you're, you're up against a uh, fictional organization in a fictional country uh, called the Tauros Tigers, by the way, Tauros, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, so, again, you're, you're putting together your, your elite team. Uh, to fight their way through the specific oh, missions. submarines. Uh, the artwork in this, I think, is all done by his brother, Nicholas. Uh, mm-hmm. His artwork is cool. absolutely superb. You'll see lots of us kicking around. Look, there's that cargo ship. Artist in the flat family, free labor? <laughs> uh, I don't think it's free. If you're good at, good at something, never oh. do it for free. We learned that. Black, insertion. Yeah. Black Hawk landing. You don't see that often, do you? No. Yeah. Most no. crashing. Yeah. Well, I might be doing that as well. <laughs> uh, but there's some interesting, in, again, interesting concepts and tweaks to the, yeah. the core system. And because mm-hmm. the, the system itself has that base flexibility, it means you can go to town here, there, everywhere. Um, yeah. And I love, I love his writing as well. Lee's got a really great um, narrative voice when it comes to the writing, mm-hmm. even coming through on things like Population Z or Z, mm-hmm. depending on how you're feeling. It, it, it was very evocative reading through the missions and stuff. Like even the base ones that are in the Rogue Warriors yeah. PDF. I was like, oh man, this just sounds like such a cool idea. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's in Tiger Blood where there's the swarm mission. Yes. Because you can play uh, so well, so cooperative, can't you? Yeah. So, so yeah. and it is just, it is Black Hawk down. You've got a small group of people and there's just nothing but a numerous masses of people coming, charging at you with AKs. And it just says um, beat your score next time. Yeah. yeah. Which is, which is absolutely <laughs> cracking. Or, I mean, you can go full A team because you're only playing with four. Mm-hmm. So you yeah, have yeah. Hannibal, uh, Face, mm-hmm. Murdoch and, uh, yeah. BA uh, and have and we, them and in the time with some miniatures for la- last year. Yeah. Last yeah. Week. Crooked, Crooked Dice do a lovely set of, of A team miniatures. A team so bodies. So you don't even have to, um, you don't even have to go fully historically slash fictionally accurate. You know, you can, you can just lean into the fact that as a, a four man team getting in there and doing the mission. Um, yeah. The last PDF you have there, Lloyd, is um, SOE work, the Ministry of Engineering Warfare, of which there is a, a film coming out shortly. There is a film, um, Mr. Mr. Henry Cavill. Sorry. See, you say Henry Cavill because you're young. I say Kerry uh, Ellis because <laughs> I'm, I'm old and Princess Bride. Uh, who also, by the way, I think he's playing his grandfather in the film. No. Uh, and I've seen an interview with him. Character is, like, I've seen him in the trailers and stuff. Well, but, well he yeah, talked yeah. to his grandfather uh, uh, before he passed and, and all sorts of right. things, but wherever he was in the... Who's uh, playing his grandfather? Henry Cavill? No. Kerry Ellis. Oh, is that a bloke? Yes. <laughs> I, I hear you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, or if he's not playing his grandfather, he's playing his superior officer of World War II. Yeah, and he's, he's going through the guy's guy diary. In the, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's going through his diary and he's going, you know, when he was preparing for the role, it's like, uh, oh, uh, he, met, he met my grandfather for uh, lunch on this day. Uh, and then like two days later, he met my great uncle <laughs> at the club. Have to. Really Who are we weird. talking about? 
Have you seen The Princess Bride or Robin Hood Men in Tights or The Pentagon Papers? Or I, I believe one of the Saw Bride, films. Yes. Right, yes, he is the main in. guy in in that. He, he is. Right. Oh, he's the blonde dude. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now Lloyd knows. <laughs> now, now and now knows. everyone on the interwebs doesn't, because yeah. now they have to go Google like Lloyd did. No, <laughs> Here we no go. they don't. I think you'll find everybody knows him. Anyway, you're distracting me, Mr. Man. So the... Um, Let me fix this all for you. Um, there you go. On Jelly the that. Warriors book. Ta-da! Yeah. Ooh. That's him. Ooh. Is, uh, <laughs> is a World War II solo campaign. So yeah. it introduces both um, a 10-man platoon rather than a four-man uh, mm-hmm. and the ongoing narrative to stop uh, Project Leviathan, I think it is, and, and the uh, the Nazi Black Shield. It's got uh, submarine, submarine bases. Yes, it, it has submarine nice. bases in it, and for that, I am one hundred percent on board. This may Sentry surprise you. Face. That's cool. Mm. Mm. Well, this is and this the is nice, the solo system. Say, the nice thing is, you could use this in regular Rogue Warriors as well if you wanted to take it yeah. beyond just playing swarm mode, which I think is a really nice touch. So, yeah, one hundred percent. So, so this, even though it's a narrative campaign set for World War Two, mm-hmm. the core solo AI mechanics from the back of it all work perfectly with the core system because, you know, back, you know, it's, it's compatible both ways. So you can start doing your, um, solo campaigns in 1980s or the 2000s or whatever happens to be. Uh, and again, uh, Arthur Sinclair and friends are a lot of fun. I will say there is a gorilla fighter called Liam O'Sullivan who I'm not saying he sets a lot of car bombs and runs off. But he disrupts <laughs> the area with his guerrilla tactics, causing mayhem and a loss of morale. And for that, that thing to type. Oh, I absolutely <laughs> adore it. Um, what about what about all these other books? Are these all the same so game so, system? Some are what? some are coming, some are planned. Uh, or, well, actually, they're all planned. Uh, the only the only ones out at the moment currently are the first three, but mm-hmm. there are additional things on the website. So if you can bounce over to the website. <laughs> um, <laughs> When you pick up the, when you pick up the books, there are um, sort of ongoing campaigns, narratives, one shots, and additional characters for most of the games that are being added se- sequentially as, as time goes on. There's a a, a lot of plans uh, that have already been baked in here, uh, so you can see Rogue Warriors is the first one there, um, which is where we are. But if you you scroll down a bit, you'll see some of the additional PDFs for us. Uh, so the new uh, prompts and all sorts of things. Yeah, there, there we go. Further. So mission prompts, silent thunder, and make it rain as as one shot games. Um, so little additional missions are constantly being added, which is nice. Uh, mm-hmm. If you go to Warrior of the Week, um, this is this is nice. This has only just started Free. in collaboration with uh, Halen Terrain. Uh, Halen are the guy who uh, picked up the. Studio, studio miniatures, miniatures range yeah. of survivors and stuff. Uh, and the plan here is to add uh, a character based on one of their models. You don't have to use their models, but they have a spectacular range of figures that really deserve to have rules for games. And so, oh, that's good. So yeah. the first one is Indie Bones here. Uh, <laughs> you two can add a swashbuckling um, archaeologist to your your maybe your SOE World War Two games. You know, nice. It's it's all good. Um, Why is it always Nazis? Because <laughs> they're like pirates. They're fun. Um, <laughs> the the other things I want to highlight here. Uh, so weekend warriors um, is a interesting system for people with kids who might cool. want to get into gaming. Um, this is a this is a generic rule set. So you get your rules and then you slip whatever genre over the top you want um, nice. and he demonstrates it beautifully on his uh on his youtube channel the little video there where he's got you know lego figures or uh fully pitted miniatures it's entirely up to you even little paper standees um being oh, surrounded by zombies and stuff oh look at that advert for land room oh well uh, so many play- parents playing everything is awesome again and getting it stuck in their head yep uh so this 
this plays on a much tighter board than Warriors does. Um, instead, hello zombies, don't get killed. Uh, instead, you're playing on a, a two by two or maybe a two by three. Oh, okay. um, That's neat. The rule system is designed for seven year olds upwards um, with enough meat on the bones that the kids, the younger kids, will be able to play it without getting overwhelmed. And there's still enough tactical flexibility in there that the older kids won't get bored That's playing nice it. Touch, um, yeah. yeah. And again, additional pieces are being added to that over time as well. Um, so there's a, like a fantasy and uh, I think a fantasy and sci-fi um, sort of card pack. What I will say is anybody who's interested in any of this stuff, you can get it printed via the medium of Amazon. There you go. Yeah. The sci-fi and so fantasy scrimmage packs. So like packs. a print on demand thing, is it through Amazon? Yes. Which is why it's not here, yes. <laughs> what I didn't know is... You demanded, and, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, this, this he does mention prime. in his little videos at the end, it's like, you know, if you buy this, then you can get... The, if you buy the print copy, you'll get the free PDF. I didn't right. know that because I wasn't paying attention. So I just <laughs> went ahead and bought them. Uh, and then very kindly, they reached out and went, do you want the PDFs? It's like, well... I'm not really going to read them, but handy for this. Um, so <laughs> if you are interested in any of these, he does explain how you can get uh, PDFs if you buy the physical stuff right. as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and my own personal favorite, if if you want to go a bit, a bit fun and wacky, is the Population Z slash Z um, zombie apocalypse game. It is a cooperative <laughs> zombie narrative. Uh, already liking it yeah. and it has such a look to it uh, where Whoa. everything kicks off in Huntsville right from the get go and it is literally you start at day one so right. the, it's not already apocalypsed you, you and your friends who are playing through here um, start in Huntsville it's quite nice <laughs> Uh, and then things get progressively worse over time. Uh, as you can see there, the artwork's great. The first umpteen odd pages in that are done like the Huntsville Gazette, as it, right. each one's like a one page of a newspaper as they're going, you know, oh, new outbreak of virus, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then it's like progression. And then it's like, that's all, folks. You know, here's the last one we're publishing. We're getting out of here, to, which, sets, <laughs> which sets the scene. Um, and then after that, you can, you can start dealing with things like this the zombies and the NPCs and there's a couple of the, you've got shufflers and soldiers and runners you know as, as zombie types that you may run into um, but again another another very simple system which means yeah. you know if you want to introduce the walking dead to your kids at a young age and who wouldn't uh, then you can you can do that and again Indeed. another rich narrative mm. that he's, he's written into it if you've got uh, a lot of those copies of old zombicides sitting around mm. great opportunity to use all that stuff Definitely. If, if you have The Walking Dead out the wazoo. The Walking Dead, yeah. Break that out. Yep. It, it's all good. Uh, and you can see here, again, the assets book, not necessary. Nice to have. It contains all the tokens and bits and pieces that you need that you can cut Card out. You can stuff. get, yeah. you can download and print as well um, if, you, if you don't want to uh, get the printed book. But obviously, you know, if if you're like me and you can't be arsed with printing, <laughs> then it's a good way of doing it. Uh, if you are going to, I suggest getting yourself some of those little paper craft punches for all the tokens. It good will idea. save you a lot of time and effort cutting things out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And another another set, set that's set up to be a campaign system and will already has, in fact, uh, a few additional pieces added to it, but will have more progressively over the, the coming months and hopefully Brilliant. years as well. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll finish off by saying, say he has a YouTube channel, does a lot of let's plays, intros and stuff like that. And then there's a ton of stuff about his own work that's in there as well. So, uh, if you're interested by any of these you should swing by and have a look at, uh, the videos about things like that. Yeah. I mean, there's breakdowns of how warriors plays out the shooting phase and, um, the, combat uh, and all the rest of it. Combat's kind the of fun. The channel's just called tabletop skirmish games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, have a link definitely down below. So mm -hmm. yeah. definitely want to have a nosy at if you're if you're after a quick and easy uh, way of getting into moderns uh, mm. or a quick and easy way of introducing your kids. Hook them while they're young, like smoking. They'll be a gamer for life then. <laughs> Fakes <Right>. forever. <laughs>
I think it's time for some news.